Okay, we're coming back into our notebooks this week uh, to take notes on some things you guys were practicing with Desmos last week. Um, go back into our polynomials unit and find this page here that we glued in. If uh, you don't have this, just take notes along with me as we go. So, factoring polynomials when, there's three criteria here. One, all of what we're going to take notes on here is true when the degree is two. Basically, when it's a quadratic. When the number of terms is three. So that means it's a trinomial. It seems like it was three years ago, but it was really about three months ago when we were naming polynomials. So we're talking about quadratic trinomials. And the coefficient of the squared term is one. And you'll see that right here. This is the form we're looking at where x squared, one term, plus bx, second term, plus c is here in the middle, in, is our term. This is an invisible one here. If you turn the page and look at what we're going to do next week, there's a variable a there. That's when this is above a one. But for this week, we are only focusing on factoring quadratic trinomials when the coefficient is one with the um, squared term. Okay, so there's steps to factoring. I would like you to write down step one, which is draw parentheses and fill in with the variable. because we are going to factor this so that we have two sets of parentheses and the first factor pair has an x and the second has an x because this is an x squared and we know x times x gives us x squared so when we pull this apart and factor it we're going to have an x here and an x here this is what is called an x puzzle but i'm going to show you we could also do this with a box so let's just say in your organizer, we're going to put B, actually let's stick with the X puzzle for now and then I'll show you later how it works with a, a, a box. So in your X puzzle, put B, in the addition spot. I'll show you in a second what I mean by that. And we're going to put C in the multiplication spot. I'm thinking as we go, when we meet on Wednesday, I will show you guys how to use the box for this instead of the X puzzle, so you'll have two different ways to do it. So I want to do a little bit of color coding here to show you what I'm talking about with um, addition and subtraction. So let me get a couple of highlighters here in my little home workstation. So this is B. And I want you guys to think back to all of the um, box puzzles you did last week. This is the like term that shows up in the box puzzle that gets added together. So to get that B, we're adding coefficients. This is where B goes. Okay, I know this is still not totally making sense, but it will. Trust me, trust me, as we do some examples together. Here's C. 
that's the term that got multiplied. So think back to last week when you were doing something with like a nine and a nine and you got 81 here. That's because that got multiplied. So that goes in the top of the puzzle. Okay. Step three is a question. Oops, I changed pens there. Let me go back. What will the signs be? So the question is, are we going to have two positives in here? Are we going to have two negatives? Or are we going to have a negative and a positive? And from the warm-up work you guys did last week, that should start becoming apparent as we work through some examples today. Step four is you're going to solve the X puzzle. And put the answers in the parentheses. So we're going to finish the parentheses. Basically, we're going to use this puzzle up here to come up with whether what the terms should be to finish up these two fa um, these two factors, and then we're going to check our work with the box. So let's do this example. We're going to do x squared plus four x plus three. Let's make an X puzzle over here. We're going to take this added term. This is the four and it goes here. This is the multiplied term and it goes here. And we're going to make some parentheses. X goes here, X goes here. We want to ask ourselves, it looks like we have everything positive because this is positive and this is positive. To solve the X puzzle, what we're going to look for here is what are two numbers that I can put on the sides of the X puzzle that when I multiply them, I get three. When I add them, I get four. So I'm going to try one and three. When I multiply one and three, I get three. When I add one and three, I get four. And let's check with our box. X plus one, X plus three. X squared, X, three X, and three. Add those together, I get four X, so that checks. That means this is our factored form of this quadratic trinomial. Let's do some examples together. Um, you can go to a blank page in your notebook if you'd like. I'm going to do them on my whiteboard here just to show that this method works. <clears throat> and hopefully for you guys to start getting more comfortable using this method. So let's factor x squared minus 5x plus 6. So first step is draw parentheses and fill in with our variable. These two x's are here because of this x. And then I'm going to make an x puzzle. This term goes down here because it gets added. This term goes here because we get it from multiplying. And now I want to think about what will the signs be? Well, if when I add them I get a negative, but when I multiply them I get a positive, Chances are good that this is a negative and so is this. So what are two negative numbers that when I add them together I get negative 5, but when I multiply them together I get positive 6? 3 and 2. Negative 3 plus negative 2 gives me negative 5. Negative 3 times negative 2 gives me positive 6. Let's check that with our box. X squared, negative 3x, negative 2x, positive 6. 
my like terms here equal negative 5, so I'm checking. This term is this one, this combined is this one, and there's that one. Let's try another example. Let's try x squared plus x minus 12. Setting up our parentheses first, put in our x. We're going to make our puzzle. The term that's here is an invisible one, so I'm going to put the one here. And this term goes up here. And I want to think about my signs. If when I multiply I get a negative, that's telling me I've got a negative and I have a positive. So now the question is, what are two numbers that when I multiply them together, I get negative 12, but when I add them together, I get positive 1? I have to think about the factors of 12. There's 2 and 6. That's not going to get me to 1 when I add them together, but 3 and 4 would. Now the question is, is it negative 3 times positive 4, or is it negative 4? times positive 3. Both of those are going to get me to this 12, this negative 12. But which one of these, when I change these from multiplication to addition, is going to get me to a positive 1? And it's this one, negative 3, positive 4. When I add them together, I get positive 1. When I multiply them together, I get negative 12. So this is negative 3 positive 4. I'm going to check it with my box. x squared, negative 3x, positive 4x, negative 12. When I add those together, I get x. So that checks because I have x squared plus 1x, which I would leave that invisible, minus 12. That means that these are our factors of this original polynomial. So do the practice work that is in um, assignments, and I will see you on Wednesday to show you how we can use the reverse of the box method instead of the X puzzle, although I like using the X puzzle. It's really visual and works for me. But I'll show you how to use the other method we've been using. Questions? Let me know. Um, and again, just look in Google Classroom's assignments for some practice work, and I'll see you in our class meeting on Wednesday.